Our last speaker is William Bucky Bailey. William Bailey III, known as Bucky, was born in January 1981 and is the son of Sue Bailey, who worked in the Teflon division at DuPont's infamous Washington Works plant in Parkersburg, West Virginia, while she was pregnant with Bucky. Bucky was born with multiple deformities, including a serrated eye eyelid, a keyhole pupil, and only one nostril. Both Bucky and Sue Bailey have been part of multiple documentaries, motion pictures, congressional hearings, and more, sharing their testimonies and bringing to light the dishonest practices within DuPont related to their chemical regulations, policy, and operations. Bucky lives in Northern Virginia with his wife, Melinda, and two children, Ethan and Ava. Thank you so much, Bucky, for being here. Thank you, doctor and committee. It's uh, my privilege and honor to speak to you uh, alongside with so many other wonderful people today. Um, sometimes I feel inadequate um, uh, to the work that so many people are doing on behalf of this fight that I will call it. And it is us uh, striving to put our best foot forward because we want uh, to celebrate others. We want to celebrate you know, what this country is about. I want to share with you the effect that the widespread industrial contamination has had on my family and myself. I was born uh, in Parkersburg, West Virginia, early in 1981 with numerous birth defects. Uh, I only had one nostril, a keyhole pupil, and a serrated eyelid in my right eye. I, all of my deformities were on my right eye. I, I struggled to breathe normally uh, immediately after birth, and the doctors told my family my parents, it was likely I wouldn't make it even through the evening. Uh, my mother, who was in shock in the time of my birth, had no idea what would have caused my birth effects since I have no siblings that have any birth effects. Um, while pregnant, she was a full-time employee at the DuPont Washington Works plant in Parkersburg, and her role there uh, at the plant was to control the production of the Teflon chemical PFOA, or C8, in, in a confined area. Uh, keeping the bubbling chemicals under control and pushing excess chemicals, in her own words, out back. Um, after my birth and, and recovering in the hospital, my mother recalls receiving phone calls from DuPont representatives inquiring about my health, inquiring about her health. And upon returning back to work, she found evidence that other pregnant women were removed from the Teflon line uh, where she worked. Uh, she also found studies from 3M, a former manufacturer of Teflon, which found the same birth effects uh, after being exposed to the chemical done in lab testing. Nevertheless, she was told by uh, DuPont that C8 was not the cause of my birth effects. And after dozens of reconstructive surgeries between ages two and five, uh, my family moved to Virginia as my parents uh, felt called to start a uh, church in Northern Virginia, and with no health insurance at the time, they tried to uh, go to uh, litigation uh, with DuPont to have them pay for my medical expenses for more constructive surgeries, reconstructive surgeries, excuse me. However, door after door was closed to us by lawyers who were refusing to take the case against a corporate giant like DuPont because they were scared and knew they really didn't have what it would have taken to do that. And years later, around the age of 25, I met Rob Ballot, who and was made aware of the litigation and the settlement and scientific study that was ongoing. And, and it was a relief to me, you know, not to mention having to battle all of the reconstructive surgeries throughout the years, but to never really have an answer for what was the cause of, of, of my deformities. It was, it was joy for me to, un, to kind of learn some of the things the scientific study found out, you know, the study would show that the disposal and the contamination of the water and of the air, that it would be made known publicly. And in that uh, joy of, you know, finding the reasoning behind something, I was disheart disheartened, you know, to say the least, to find out that some of the sickness and disease that my mother was facing was caused by this contamination. and. Um, it wasn't just me that had to deal with deformities. My mother was diagnosed with thyroid disease. 
And there were many people who I came in contact with over this uh, scientific study, one of the largest ever done, that I found who were losing their lives. They had family members who had lost their lives, battling sickness and diseases. And, and, and it broke my heart and it still does to, the, to this day because my deformities were not my, my deformities were not determined to be a result of the contamination through the, the scientific study, despite admissions by DuPont scientists stating that the C8 could harm fetuses and cause birth deformities specifically. Um, throughout the scientific study, uh, scientists concluded that my children would have a 50% chance of having my same deformities and um being newly wed, which around the time I met Rob a lot, that was um, earth shattering as much as I love children. And um, <clears throat> I knew that there was no way that I could put my children through what I went through. And it was very tough to make that decision. And it took me even, even being a man of faith and, and praying and trusting in God and, and, and having a relationship and, and living that life of faith. It still took a, a a giant leap of faith for me to step out and have children. And, and it cost me 10 years of, you know, having those wonderful children. My father passed away in 2008 and he didn't, he didn't get to meet my children. And that was something that it, it struck me very hard once I realized that that, that snatched that opportunity for me. And um, with my son, who's now four years old and my daughter, who's two years old, they're completely whole and healthy and don't have the deformities. I, I'm so thankful they have been spared the issues that I have dealt with, you know, my entire life. But today I have another reason for trepidation. It's it's with the high levels of C8 in my blood that, you know, I ha I have questions now. Uh, now I'm facing, am I going to face kidney cancer? Am I going to face tes testicular cancer, ul ulcerative colitis, thyroid disease, or high or high cholesterol? Will I lose my life to one of these diseases? And I think today we stand in, in the midst of a mountain. You know, some of these same words I spoke to Congress approximately two years ago, and we haven't had much movement, and we still stand. You know, we can, we can point fingers and we can call names, but we have to start with just one step. And... I, I hope that we can all acknowledge that we need to move in the same direction at the same time and not point fingers and not fight and not quarrel, but find out what we can do to stop this from, from happening because it's going to cost us our lives. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you.